Hey everybody, welcome to a special preview for the very first bit of action that the Carlton Football Club and the Geelong Football Club will have playing against uh, teams that are not themselves. And I've got Ben from the Hoops Crew, the newly named Hoops Crew. Hello, mate. Terry, how you doing, mate? Uh, it's been a quiet off season, but I can't wait to get back into footy again. It's been feels like it's been way too long. Thanks for having me on. No, of course, mate. Uh, maybe we should just quickly touch on. I mean, it's been a pretty big off season for you guys, as you said just earlier. Doubled in size. We are now the Hoops Crew. Talk me through what's happened there. Uh, so yeah, we're definitely the Hoops Crew now. Uh, previously, the Hoops Show. We started off myself and Paul James, uh, and then we've been mates with uh, another podcast, uh, audio podcast channel called the Chaps Chat Cats for quite some time, several years actually. And and I was just chatting with Jake, uh, one of the guys from that show, saying, "Mate, we should just join forces, and uh, we're going to take over uh, the Cats uh, YouTube uh, world." And we'll see what happens, but uh, we just joined up a few months ago, so it's been fun. It's uh, we really get along, all of us, all five of us, uh, th three of them, two of us, and um, it's been good fun so far. But it's it is off season, so we, we want to get stuck into the real stuff. So um, just trying to keep the summer content rolling along. It's always a little bit tricky, but um, but you do your best. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> like I said earlier, first bit of action Thursday morning. An interesting one. We've got a match simulation. So I don't know if that means four quarters. I don't know if that means eight eighths or yeah. seven sevenths, but um, excited to have the footy back nonetheless. It's going to be it's, – it's hard to know. I just want to see the boys have a competitive hit out against someone else other than their teammates. I guess every club wants that. All the players want that. You just want to get out there and see what – you can't read too much into it. I'm sure you'll feel the same. It just – you just hope and pray no one gets injured and you just want to see something, especially I always like seeing something from the young guys. You kind of know what to expect from the older boys um, year on year out. There's, there's not a lot of difference there. It's like, who's this young kid? Who's this uh, second or third year player who's going to make a big jump this year? And that's what I'm really interested in seeing uh, over the match team and the, and the pracky match coming up the week after. Yeah, right. Well, what is the overall feeling about the Cats from your perspective, I would not have a clue if I'm honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me about Carlton. Well, you can ask me about Carlton, but from a, <laughs> from my point of view, and I do not represent all of Geelong fans, um, but from for me, I'm just saying we haven't had any injuries, and that's not the story of the Geelong Footy Club in 2023, as, as the whole AFL world knows. Yeah, Geelong Premiership hangover, all that sort of stuff, but we were decimated. Uh, by injuries. Thank you, Gary Rowan, for KOing uh, Jeremy Cameron. That didn't help either. But uh, th this off season has been absolutely, knock on wood, absolutely perfect. There's been nothing that's gone wrong. No one's got in trouble. No one's been found on a curbside intoxicated. No, none of that sort of stuff. Everyone's fit, healthy. You just watch the footage of the boys running around. You think, oh, they look focused. Um, and some, especially some of the older boys, they're like, oh, it's our last crack at a premiership. Not to say we'll win the premiership, uh, Tez, but I, I think the boys, you should see a bit of a bounce back from the Cats in 2024 is what I'll say. Yeah, well, I mean, if we, felt, if we rewind 12 months ago, we've had uh, Ed Sheeran perform at the MCG. It was a bit yes. of a, a turf issue, and I think that, Geelong probably were one of the, the few teams that suffered maybe as a result. I think it was Tom Stewart who landed a little awkwardly in the first game last year. Is that right? That's right. He, I think he might have only missed one, maybe two games in the end. We thought he was done for about a third of the year. Um, but no, he, he pulled through that okay. And I think we a couple of other blokes. I think uh, Sam DeConning was in the wars a fair bit, game one, and then he was getting bashed up by every other opposition club yeah, pretty much for the first four or five weeks. So he was... He was struggling. But, yeah, that very first game against Collingwood, which if you go and watch that game again, it's an absolute cracker. Uh, Collingwood, to their credit, they ran over the top of us in the end, but uh, it was one of the best games of the year in round one. It was fantastic. And we, I think we were 16 goals one at one point. I uh, thought so we were feeling pretty good. We were high-fiving each other uh, on the second level at the MCG. We were loving life. But um, Collingwood, and I, I, did, I didn't raid them the whole year until the last game. They ran over the top, but uh, yeah, MCJ. We lo we lost a few players, and it was just the story of the whole year, really. Just yeah, every other fair. week, someone else went down. Yeah. So going going into, I mean, we'll, maybe we'll start with the match sim. You mentioned everyone's yeah. healthy. Is there an expectation that everyone plays, or you know, rests certain guys? Um, I think 
I think for the most part, you'll see. I think you'll see the majority of the list playing. I, I don't doubt that. I think there's a couple of guys that have had limited pre seasons. I know Gary Rowan's partner's just had a baby, so uh, I don't think that I don't think that'll stop him playing. But if anything, it's like oh, maybe you haven't had the best preparation or something like that. But um, no, there's a. I think Blitz might have had some hamstring stuff over the off season, and that was sort of that affected him towards the back end of last year. But he's been running around. Uh, I got along to a, a training session a few weeks back. He was running laps, but he seemed fine. No, no one seems, and everything we kind of hear uh, through various channels is everyone's travelling long great. So I don't expect yeah. anyone to miss um, whether they. Who plays, who plays those first three, four quarters uh, of that match sim? I, I don't know. I imagine if you go back to last year, to, play like Tom Atkins, he, it was interesting. He actually didn't play. I thought, he, well, what's going on? He's not playing. But he actually played half with the senior team and then half with the uh, the twos, I guess. So, and I thought, oh, gee, that's – I don't know if that's something the club wanted or he wanted to do. It, was like, it felt like, to me, a real leadership thing. He really wanted to connect with some of the younger boys and, and, and use that as a teaching opportunity. Um, so I imagine you'd see a bit of a mix. I think um, I'm not sure if he'll ask me later on, but uh, there's a couple of young guys I've got in I've got in mind that I reckon the coaching panel will probably put forward in that first uh, match sim, and you might would be surprised to see him in the practice match as well when things really when that top 23 really starts to tighten up a little bit. I'll ask you now. Who are those guys? Who do we need All to right. look out for? <laughs> I reckon. Well, if you're doing if you're doing your super coach, I don't know about super coach, but I reckon this guy will probably play ten plus games. Um, and he was our first pick in the draft. Is Connor O'Sullivan? Everything we see, everything we hear, he is ready to go. He looks fantastic. He he's got the best attitude to his footy. I think he'll be right to go. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him round one. Um, I'm not saying he's going to have a, Decon- a, a Sam DeConning like year uh, where he just came out of nowhere, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw maybe 10 to 15 games out of him in his first year. Uh, we've lost Sam- we've lost um, Asava Radagalia. Uh, he's he's a defender, so I expect him to get some opportunities down there. Uh, as I said off the top, injury's looking great, but we know it doesn't stay that way for the whole year, so there will be some opportunities, uh, and you'd imagine a bloke like him would get a chance. Uh, expect to see a bit more... Uh, from Toby Conway, uh, the big fat, the big ruckman, uh, they call him Chili, or a lot of blokes call him Chili. Uh, expect to see him. He's probably going to nudge Reese Stanley, not at completely out of the side, but I imagine it'll be yeah, it'll be neck and neck between those two for most of the year. I think Toby's going to get plenty of opportunities because because the club rates him highly. He played the last game of the regular season last year. Um, we didn't play finals clearly, but uh, he played the last game for the Cats last year and absolutely towered up Tim English, uh, who's touted as the um, number one ruckman in the comp. So uh, read into that what you will. But uh, he's got, he's been travelling well, no injuries. He copped a fair bit last year. He's, he was struggling to get on the park a fair bit, but he's looking pretty good. Um, a guy I've got a soft spot for, and he probably won't play many games. He might get a couple. He's a, a, a bloke from South Australia called Phoenix Foster, second year at the club. Um, he... I, I went to a practice game and I'm like, oh, Tom, Tom Hawkins is going well. I'm like, no, actually, that's not Tom Hawkins. That's Phoenix Foster. He looks huge. He's, he's just, I reckon he's added 10 kilos. Um, we'll see how he goes. He's one I hope um, they give some opportunities to. I think he's going to be good. He's, a, he's, a, he's going to be a bit of a cult figure at the Cats. There's a lot of, uh, lot of support for him already, um, especially on Cats Twitter. So there's a few there for you, Tess. No, well, that, that last one there, that's not a name that I was familiar with. And son of, he's a son of a Daniel Foster who goes way back to the 90s or noughties. Uh, not so, not the son of, nephew of, I should say. Uh, Daniel Foster used to play for the Cats. Might have only played a dozen games or something like that, but uh, there is a family connection to the club. So, uh-huh. see, we've got a kid named Harry Lemmy who is the call it the, the understudy, and it seems like he and, and Phoenix have a bit in common given you've got two superstar forwards, you know just sort yeah. of to learn the craft from. So you're not really in a rush to see him play in the ones. Is it just more of a dominate the twos, get some confidence, and you can sort of do a bit of a slow burn? That's it. I think so. I think he's – he's he's he was – Phoenix was injured for a fair chunk of the first half of last year, uh, and they played him in a range of different roles as well. So he didn't really get to settle at any point in 2023 at his first year at the club. Um, so I'm hoping that he gets some opportunity. Hopefully they settle him as a forward. That seems to be where – from what I saw from the practice game I went to, they were playing him as a forward. 
uh, a key forward. So whether, you know, he, he seems to, he got a couple of goals in that game. He looked pretty good. I heard uh, Dwayne Russell on SEN the other day talking about him as well, which uh, which was nice. Uh, that you know he's because I didn't get to see that other game uh, during the last week, but um, it's nice to see the other. He's catching the eye of a few others as well. So look, a couple of games. I don't, don't expect him to set the world on fire. He's probably he's probably at this stage because you haven't got anything to judge him on. It's probably a, a depth player, really. If anything else, we'll see. And that's not a shot at him at all. It's just the, you know most of you. Most of your twos are until they've sort of given their taken our opportunities and, and done something with it. But um, I hope he gets a, I hope he gets a game. But the the real one to watch, I think, is Connor Connor O'Sullivan. He'll absolutely take over. Uh, he'll make a spot his own. Uh, if, if not this year, it'll be in twenty twenty five. That's for sure. I like it. I've already got gotten value out of this for my own uh, fantasy purposes. Coach, you know, he'll play fifteen twenty games. Get him there. No, he's not. He's just going to be a lockdown defender. He won't. He won't be racking up possessions, uh, yeah. kicking goals or anything like that. I've got two players I want to ask about who are my favourites from Geelong that I want to know where where they're at. Tanner Brun is my number one. Oh, Tanner! He, Tanner Brun, I just loved him yep. from the day he was drafted. I just like the way he goes yep. about it. Is he ready to just take another step? You're like, well, what's the what's the feel on your side with him, mate? I'm. <sighs> I think he's he's ready to absolutely pop. Uh, I'm expecting huge things from him. I have him. I've got a, about three or four most improved players who I think and he, at Geelong, and I think he'll be one of those. Th- uh, I'll say a couple of most improved. I think I've already mentioned Toby Conway was the other one, but I think Tanner Bruin. He started off really slowly when he came over from uh, the Giants last year. Uh, and towards the second half of the year, he was ripping games apart. Uh, and I'm like, goodness me, give him another year at the club. Uh, getting used to his teammates, but he will be. I wouldn't be surprised if he was uh, our second best mid uh, by the end, by the end of the year. Uh, I'm not saying round one. Um, there's a long way to go between now and the end of the year, um, but I think come then. I think um, injuries aside, I, I think he'll he'll be ready to go. He, he's huge. He's going to be huge for the Cats, and I think uh, opposition teams will want to probably look out for him. He's a goal kicker as well, so. Uh, he needs to smile more, Terry. That's that's the only shot that I've got. He doesn't smile much, and and Paul and I, co-host of the Hoops Crew, we 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 want him on our show at some point. But we're going to try and educate the man to smile a little bit more if we can. So it's fun. Footy's fun. Know, we love it. Do you know what though? The the reason why I like him is because he's so serious. He's got like oh, a, he is, he? he's got intensity about him that I like. I like a serious player that comes in, and especially yeah. in their first few years, and they just work their ass off, and he just. I feel like the body just needs to match the ambition a little bit with him. A couple of pre-seasons and yeah. I feel like he's in the sweet spot now to take the next step. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Another bloke who's really serious about his footy is Tom Atkins at Geelong. Mm. Um, I'm, kind of, I'm surprised a lot of opposition fans don't talk about him more. Uh, he, I could sing about his praises all day long, but he's another one that, um, he's, a, he's a lovely bloke too. We have, we've met him before. He's, he's fantastic, but uh, yeah. Uh, look, I love Tanner Bruin. I think uh, it was it was quite funny seeing him get drafted to the Giants and almost look like his um his dog had been shot or something like that. Yeah, so yeah. I, <laughs> he was pretty happy to come back to Geelong. I think as as was Ollie Henry and a few of those other guys that were getting homesick. Um, so yeah, um, I, I expect big things from him. Mm-hmm. And then the other question I had about Geelong, I don't know if I got sucked into a little narrative or a little tweet. Is it true that Tom Stewart is going to be playing a little bit more up the ground or are we just keeping him in his best position? I think you'll see Tom St- – well, he already plays up the ground a fair bit anyway if you don't watch okay. much a long game. So he often will start uh, in the centre on a wing um, or at half forward – or sorry, half back or whatever. Uh, it's not uncommon to see him start on a wing. He's He's done that many, many times. I think if anything, you might see him in a few more – contests at, at the bounce um, and you might see him maybe have 5% more time in the midfield, but don't expect, they're not going to turn him into a midfielder. Um, uh-huh. It's not, I don't think it's going to be a, a massive transformation that the the Twitter and, and, um, and the news breakers want you to believe. It, it's just going to be a little bit more exposure there. He can play anywhere really, but you're robbing Peter to pay Paul by moving him out of the back line. Uh, I think you do need him down there. He will be in the back. He'll be a defender for the majority. Uh, but there'll be yeah. times when we throw him forward, or there'll be games where yeah, the, the risk of getting a little bit arrogant. And all clubs at the top end of the ladder kind of do this; they sort of move pieces around a little bit to expose other guys to situations uh, where they have to kind of 
problem solve things. So I, you see that you were seeing that a lot in 2022 in the premiership year, but um, we kind of was just plugging holes last year. We didn't have a choice, but um, but I'd imagine, yeah, if things are going pretty well during a game, you'd, you'd see him kind of sit in different roles and you're giving other guys opportunities. Like we gave a lot of opportunity to Asava Radicalia last year. Uh, you yeah. saw him get more, more exposure to the ball than you ever have, but he needed to. We needed to see what he was capable of. And uh, anyway, he's gone. Stuff him. Interesting. Mate, <laughs> it's his loss. Yeah, he's stuffing. No, no. Good bloke. But um, yeah, he had to go for opportunities, I suppose. Fair, fair. So, what's the expectation for you, for the Cats this year from your lens? Is there a number of wins? Is there a, is there a you know a bracket of wins or like how do you how do you perceive your expectations? Um, I'm well. I'll start with the answer. I think we'll probably get about 16, 17 wins. Finish fourth or fifth on the ladder. I think it all depends on how the season starts. Um, you could almost sense it last year when the Cats went 0-3, and, and I think your mob had something to do with that as well. Um, but, yeah, uh, if you start reasonably well, even 2-2, two and two, we can live with that. We, did, we, we were 2-2 two and two in the premiership year. Um, I think we're going to be okay. I think the first four weeks isn't really going to be super tough for us. Uh, we've, got a, we've got the first game. Uh, at Cadenia Park against the Saints with the new grandstand. So you'd have to say Geelong would be favourite for that one. Uh, and then it's and then it's uh, the Crows over there. I think we've got, we're playing away a fair bit. We've got the Crows over in Adelaide and then and Hawthorne, uh, which you'd think we'd, Cats would get there. So a minimum, and then the Bulldogs, which is, uh, I think, the gather round game. So there's you'd have to think, just looking at that, a neutral you'd think would say at least two wins for Geelong there. As a Geelong supporter, I'm happy two and two, uh, finishing the first month two and two. Clearly, you want to win all of them, but your season's not over. But, oh, geez, if you get down, if you're one and three or, or oh and four, uh, it's it's really, really tough. And yeah, history will yeah. tell you that. It's it's not often that you see clubs uh, do do that well from that position. But I think the Cats are going to go okay. I think our, our fixture's not too bad. We've got four games against um, top four sides, so that's not too bad. It's not the best fixture going around for us, but it's not clearly not the worst. Uh, nine games at home with 40,000. We haven't had big crowds. We've av- Our crowds have been around 19,000 19, because half the oh, stadium has wow. been um, a construction site for the last few years. So to have a, 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 a rabid Geelong crowd again uh, and nine home games, geez, yeah, back in the day we'd win all those. So um, we're not going to win all. We don't win all our home games these days. But, you know, if you could win seven or, seven or eight of those, you're well on your way, aren't you? So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but I think, I think yeah, 16, 15, 16, 17 wins. That's me being really optimistic. Uh, I was very pessimistic last year. Um, the year before, I was very optimistic. I thought we were going to win the whole thing. Uh, this year, I'm, I'm back on the bandwagon again. I'm ready to go. I'm feeling good based on – just probably based on how the preseason's gone. You kind of – you know, you just don't know really at the end of the day and other clubs sort of step up as well. The Blues will probably take another step this year, maybe – I guess you'd be hoping they win the whole thing, but at the very least, a grand final appearance is probably the pass mark for your boys. And every club will be looking to improve, and and every single player on every list is looking to go um, five or ten percent better, if not more. So it's a it's a tough comp, Terry, and um, I think the Cats will be in a good position to have a good crack. They're definitely not behind the eight ball, that's for sure, and that's that's all you can really hope for uh, before the season starts. Yeah, no, that's very interesting. You, you you won't enjoy the ladder predictor that I did where oh, I had the cats. <laughs> you bastard! Where have you got us? I've done your dirty. I can't remember where you finished, but I think from memory it was ten wins, nine or ten wins. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm. Yeah, I just. I actually didn't realize until we started talking that there was a you know touch wood a, a completely healthy list. Oh. At the end of the day, if your senior guys are, are healthy, they're still champions of the game. You know. Yeah. Uh, we've we've lost Isaac Smith. He's he's gone, and Asava we spoke about before. So, the, and as every club's had a change in personnel, but um, but the core group still there. And look, Isaac Smith was probably just just struggling to get over the line anyway. And Asava probably wasn't in our best six most weeks, even though he played seventeen games last year. He still probably wasn't in our best six. Um, it look it's so hard to tell. I think I, I, it's really hard. I mean, trying to predict the top eight before the season started is almost impossible. I think you get a good feel for it after the first month. That's always been my feeling that you kind of know. There's a couple of teams that might sort of turn things around. That, you know, that it can still happen, but generally you're sort of seeing where teams are at. And 
you're seeing who's getting injured and all that sort of stuff. So I think, yeah, I don't, I'm not surprised with uh, – I think a lot of people like yourself will have the Cats uh, 8 to 10, 12 wins or something like that. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think most people would probably not consider Geelong a top four team anymore, but eh, it's hard to write the Cats off. Um, you're going to be oh, brave. Hey, rule number one, you're you're one never write one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's one bad year. Uh, we have one every now and then. Uh, the last time we had a bad year was 2015. Um, can we have two in a row? That's the big thing. So we'll see. We'll see what other people tip. I don't think many, many people will be tipping the cats to make finals, but I've got them fifth or sixth. Yeah, fair, fair call. Cool. Um, now look, I'm excited. Thursday I'll be there. 11, it's weird timing, 11 a.m. We've got a big day at on the Carlton side of things. We've got the match sim followed by the VFL will play, and then we've got our uh, our AGM where we're going to find out if Luke Sayers will get his extra 12 mm. months. Um, so it's a big day for the Blues, and you know, to be honest, I'm just like I said earlier, I'm just excited to be watching our guys, and I'm sure you're the exact same. Play against actual opposition, and you know, try and tackle with with full force. Look, I'm I'm excited to watch your boys as well. To be honest, like I think I wouldn't say the AFL world has has the Blues as their second favorite team, but it was fun seeing the boys finally take you know take the next step. Um, don't say that. Don't stay up the top too long, Terry, because we don't want. It's like Richmond. We didn't. It's like it was nice that you won the premiership, but yeah, don't stay at the top too long. But it was fun. I was. I used to often would tune into um, Pommy on the live show. That was all heaps of fun, and just seeing seeing you guys get those close wins and somehow win that win a final and win another one. It was like, what's going on? Here? This is. And I was like, it just takes you back as a as an opposition or as a Geelong supporter when we kind of went through that rise, and it was like, oh, just all these memories come flooding back. So. I did have a I did have a soft spot for you, and I am hoping, uh, apart from the, the well, we're playing you guys three times if you count the match sim this year. Um, mm-hmm. Hoping we win those ones clearly, but I am I am hoping that the Blues uh, can at least make a prelim again. Uh, don't I'm not predicting. I'm actually going to. I don't know if this is doing you dirty. Maybe maybe you think it is. Um, maybe if you as well. But I've got the Blues making another prelim, but unfortunately, just not getting past it again. So. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's the Geelong and me that Geelong couldn't get past prelims forever. You don't deserve it either. Um, yeah. Maybe, but uh, I think that's probably where it ends. And then maybe twenty five is the is the real big one. Yeah, I mean, when people talk to me, in, you know, every day, I, I do have this sense. Like, I wouldn't be surprised watching all the other clubs go through their journey to the top. Like we've gone, we had a tough time to get two finals, and I think there's another, you know, journey ahead of us to get to a premiership. Um, now that we've started being, a, you know, looked at and considered and proven ourselves as a contender based on ability, um, yeah, I mean, if we made a prelim, that's it's still a pretty good result given that this is the very beginning of this group's window. Whatever it's going to look like in three to five years will be what it'll be. Um, but yeah, I remember when we were kicked out the last round by Collingwood. I remember trying to fit the narrative of the Carlton story to another club. And I was hoping that our final gaming round, uh, 23, 2022 was, uh, the O five swans, uh, oh. swans Geelong final. Yeah. And I thought that kind of heartbreak spurs you on. So I'm hoping we don't have another prelim version of that. Um, but you need it, right? You need a, you need like a weight to carry like a, a, you know, you don't want that to happen again, but you kind of need to, build off some sort of failure you do and um you mentioned the 2005 semi-final loss to the swans we actually that was our worst year well not a worst year ever but it was a, 2006 was the one where we nearly sacked bomber thompson as coach and uh everyone nearly left and the place was nearly torn down um but thankfully but, uh, to, to your point you have to suffer pain sometimes you've got to and it, and it often goes that way too. It's not a, a linear thing that like success doesn't. Oh well, we got we finished prelim. We're guaranteed to make grand final. We don't. We we win it the following year. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it is a bit of a roller coaster ride, and sometimes you do have to go through that pain a little bit. Um, you know, and that I'm not saying that'll happen to Blues this year. Uh, it's definitely happened to Geelong though. Uh, that we, we've had some tough times. It doesn't feel like it if you're a young person watching this show. Um, I've, 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 I've known Geelong way before 2007, and I've seen all the rough, the tough times. But um, but yeah, like they, they only make you stronger in the end. It doesn't, it doesn't guarantee success, but goodness me, when you get it, oh, does it feel so sweet, Terry? Oh my God! So if it, if that's what's if that's the story for Carlton this year, 
you are going to have the best time, the best journey, and the best six months. Like all these bloody soap dodge and uh, Collingwood supporters have been having the last six months. Uh, yeah. It's going to be lots of fun if you, if the Blues can take another step. Even if you make a grand final, you'll probably still feel shit if you lose it. But uh, but uh, it should be fun either way. Enjoy enjoy the journey, mate. Yeah. No, fair. Fair. Well, yeah, like you said, we play each other three times if you include three the times. two games during the season. So I dare say we might see each other again. Um, it's good to be, it's good to talk to you for a number of reasons. One, because it just means that footy's back and we're into the thick of it. And 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 two, it's you know it's just good to see another fan channel emerge. And you know, got more friends to talk to now when we do opposition previews. That's all right. And we you know we take it. We we uh, we we love what you do, mate. We've said it many times on our channel. We've had you on our channel before in our behind the play interview series. Uh, so we appreciate you coming on there, and we we we've always rated your channel. And we love, and as I said, I've got a soft spot for the Blues, but I've also I also love your fans as well. Uh, I won't I won't I won't love your fans when we're playing you, but um, but I but I do enjoy the the banter, and I and I, and I love um, love the energy that you guys bring. So um, anyway, that's probably the best compliment I can give the fan base. Yeah, we'll um, but you're doing a great job, mate. You and the rest of the team, um, loving what you're doing, putting out there. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, all right, well that's us. We'll chat soon, no doubt. Go Blues. Go Blues. (laughs) Go Cats.